I think we are live. Welcome, Facebook, YouTube. We are actually live on Instagram too. But on Instagram, I really can't share pictures. I can't read the chat as well. So if you are watching on Instagram, come over. YouTube, speak English with this guy. All right. Focus now on the chat. Do you know who's here? It's Audie the Tide. I see Williams is here. South America is in the house. Sita, welcome. There he is. He's from Argentina. Pony's here. She lives in the United States, but she is from Thailand, just like Audie, Wiley the Coyote. Welcome, everyone. In today's English lesson, we are going to be talking about the American school. We should be here for about an hour. There are so many terms about the American school. We cannot cover all of them, but I have about 20. I will have some sentences on the screen for you. Hopefully, there will be no typos. I don't know. Sometimes there are typos, but I will have pictures on the screen. Sometimes my face will be small. Sometimes my face will be bigger. Sometimes my face will be really big. There is also a form where you can ask questions about the American school here on Facebook and YouTube. But I'm sorry, not on Instagram. Come find us on YouTube or Facebook. All right. Are we on, here on time? Yes, we are here on time now. I was busy talking with everybody on Instagram. I forgot about the time. Hope everyone is doing well, though. Yulia is here. I just want to say hi to a couple more people. Luke from Poland, welcome. Freddie the Wolf, that man is from France. Cecilia. She is from Argentina. Hope everyone is doing well. Isma, hello. Hello. How are you? Dorio from somewhere in South America. I am going to guess Brazil just because it's the biggest country. It gives me the best chance of being correct. Bangladesh. We just had a lesson this week from little Bangladesh. Hi, Professor. Francisco, that is the first thing I want to talk about, Professor. So when we talk about school in the United States, and a term like Professor is used, that is mostly, I think, actually always used for a teacher at college or at a university. So I will happily accept that term professor, but I'm not a professor. A professor is someone who teaches at a college or a university, but I know what you meant, Francisco. Thank you so much. It's a very nice name to be called. Indonesia is in the house. Hey, you are welcome. I love doing these live lessons each week. It makes me feel good to think that I might be helping others learn English. It's a good feeling. Speaking of learning English, hang on. Vienna is in the house. I hope all is well in Austria. So the chat is quite active. There are a lot of messages in the chat. We have about 250 people watching. If you would like to ask a question about education or schools in the United States, check out the description. There is a form and I will answer questions. How about that? But before we do that, a super chat came in. A super chat from Amina. She has been so nice over the years dropping super chats 
She is also a channel member. So I wanted to thank her before we start. And I have a little something for you. Thanking you for the super chat. Oh, thank you so much for the super chat. All right, I'm back. I took a sip of water. There's also a new channel member. Her name is Leah. She became a bronze channel member. So that means each week there will be an additional video for you. So Leah, welcome to the club. As a bronze member, you get an extra video once a week. If you would like to become a silver member, that gives you access to the private Discord. We chat there. Gold members, there is a folly space. With that said, what, Leah? Oh, sorry. I forgot one thing for you. Hang on. New member. Make sure you check the members tab for the Discord, the members chat, and the bonus videos. He's in the house. Oh, sorry. You caught me talking to everyone on Instagram. When I play that, you can't see me, but on Instagram, they can. So I just wanted to say hello to everybody on Instagram. All right. To the lesson. To the lesson. Let's talk about the first day of school. The first day of school. Now, it depends on where you live in the United States on when the first day of school happens a few places it will happen at the beginning of july or in the middle of july but where i live and most places in the united states there is a sentence below i will read that and you can practice shadowing if you would like the first day of school is at the end of august or early september in the United States. Yeah. So we usually have summer vacation that lasts from the last day of school. Wait a second. Maybe we should talk about the last day of school. And here I have a picture for you. It seems like this teacher is just, he's really mad. I don't know. Doesn't look happy. Maybe he had a rough school year and his students were really bugging him or getting on his nerves towards the end of the year. Maybe that's why he looks like that. Bugging him, getting on his nerves. Do you know those two terms? Frustrating him, making him mad. So the last day of school happens at the beginning or middle of June in the United States. So the school year often will run from September until June, the rest of June, July, August. That is summer vacation. That is one of the best times to be a teacher, in my opinion. The school year can become long. But just remember, each state, each city might have a different start time and a different end date. So my wife, she's also a teacher. She teaches in a different city. She teaches in a different school district. You may know her, Jamie. She has done some live lessons here on the channel. She often starts a couple days before I do. And she often gets out of school a couple days earlier than I do. So her summer vacation starts earlier than mine. Hope that helps. Let me look at the question form. There are three questions. I can't forget about, and I know all these people, Renata, Natalia, Ruslan. All right. Those are names that I remember. So let me pull one of these up. Looks like Renata is first. Okay, so Renata, and she is from Brazil. Let me share that with you. It's going to take just a second. It's always helpful, I think, 
if you can also read what I am saying, it will help you learn English just a little more quickly. Learning English is tough enough, right? But if you can hear somebody speaking and also see the words that they are speaking, it might be helpful. Hey, Instagram. There's There are 300 people watching on Instagram. No, sorry. 220 now. So come on over. YouTube. I made Instagram mad. Yeah, I'm not getting as many followers on Instagram every day anymore. I think I talk too much about YouTube on Instagram. So sorry, Instagram. Uh, let's make this a little bigger so my eyes can see it. If you have bad eyes like I do, this might help. All right. Hello, dear Brent. My question is, do you remember if you were also insecure on your first day? Have a great day. All right. These questions are easy for me to answer because they are about me, but they also might be boring for other people. But let me tell you a quick story about my first day at school. Thank you, Renata, for the question. So we are going to talk about kindergarten pretty soon. That is the grade that students who are five or six years old will attend. They will be kindergartners, little five-year-old, little six-year-old. And on my first day of school, I was really nervous. I did not want to go to school and I had to take the bus. So I had to leave my mom. I was very scared. And guess what? The bus, we will talk about the bus soon. The school bus, it's a big yellow thing. Yeah, that thing never picked me up. So I was late to school on my first day. I remember my mom dropping me off. And I remember her leaving and I'm pretty sure I cried. So yes, I was nervous on my first day of school. Most students I think are my own kids. I don't like to talk too much about my own kids because they don't probably like it either, but they were not that scared on their first day of school. They seem to like it. I don't know. Maybe they were just lying to us. I don't know. Hello everyone on Instagram. Hope you're doing well out there. All right, I am going to go because I'm distracted. So Instagram, thank you so much for joining, but I'm going to go and focus on Facebook and YouTube now. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Adios, amigos. All right, YouTube, Facebook, I'm back. Let's talk more about the first day of school, the last day of school, this happens every day. It is something called dismissal. Dismissal happens at the end of the school day. That is what we call trying to get all of the kids home safely. Now, that might happen in a couple different ways. They might be a buster. They might be a walker. We'll talk about that in a minute. Dismissal is what many schools call getting all of the kids back home. Dismissal might be the favorite part of any student's day. Might be the favorite part of any teacher's day as well. The end of the day, dismissal. There might be a bell that rings to signal dismissal is starting. Students may be walkers. So if somebody is a walker, guess what they do? They walk home from school. That's a walker. Some students may take the bus. We call those students bussers. So some teachers may ask at the end of the day, are you a walker or are you, are you a busser? So a busser, they will take the bus home. Some students might get picked up by their parents. So we will talk more about that phrasal verb picked up in a future slide, but drop off and pick up can be very difficult for people who are learning English. We'll get to that though. 
What about this? Home room. That might be the first class of the day for students. And it's not really a class. Home room is just a place, a classroom, the gym, the library, where you go at the beginning of the day. Home room happens at the beginning of the school day. It is the first room students will go to. So at the, as a teacher, I have a home room. I think I have 16 students in my home room. And one of the most important things that happens in home room is that I take attendance. If you look at the bottom, I will read that sentence. One of the most important things that happens in home room is that attendance is taken. And what that means is that I go on my iPad and I fill out an attendance sheet. It used to be a piece of paper. Now it's on the iPad. And I let the office know, or I let the principal know, which students are here, which students are present, which students are in the building, and which students are at home. Maybe they are sick. But we need to know who is at the school and who is not. So I will fill out my attendance. The office will get that. If students are here or they're present, we use both terms, that's good. But if they are absent, then the students will receive a call at home. Their parents will hopefully answer and then say, oh yes, they are sick today. My son cannot come into school today. He is not feeling well. So it's important to know who is at school, who is not, who might be skipping school. If you skip school, that means you're not sick. Your parents think you are at school, but you are somewhere else. Yeah, you are skipping school. Arone is here. Benvenuto. Benvenuto. All right. Um, the mead. Hope I'm saying that correctly. Do I sell a course? No. Right now, all of my lessons are free here on YouTube. We do have um, an option where you can become a channel member or a Facebook subscriber. You will get an extra video each week, but that's about it. Annie, my first day of school was in Madagascar, where I grew up. I was also nervous and cried. Annie, I'm sorry. I think Annie lives in, in France now, but maybe, maybe she grew up in Madagascar. I think they speak French in Madagascar. So moving from Madagascar to France, at least you have the same language, I think, right? Hey, Daniel, what's going on? Daniel, long time subscriber from Brazil. Great to see you here, my friend. Syria's in the house. Damascus, capital of Syria, right? Aleppo is another big city in Syria. I would love to visit Syria one day. I've seen a couple videos where people visit and still maybe a little dangerous for Americans to visit, but hopefully one day it will be a little bit safer. All right, Harry asks, did I ever skip school when I was in school? Um, no, the only time I did was for senior skip day. Senior skip day is a tradition in the United States. Senior year, that is your last year of school. And some parents will let you skip. My parents did. And a lot of the seniors will do fun things. My friends and I, we went canoeing. We went on a canoe trip. And then after we played some football at my friend's house for senior skip day. Sita, what's going on? She's from Brazil. 
All right. Meg is here. Hey, hope you're doing well. Oh, thank you, Daniel. Yeah, 400,000 followers on Instagram. But like I said earlier, I think I made Instagram mad about talking about YouTube too often. <laughs> so um, I'm not getting as many followers as I as I once was. Uh, I, I, I got 100,000 followers in three days on Instagram. So I love Instagram, but um, I also like YouTube and Facebook probably better. It's just easier to connect with people, to talk with people. Ah, I don't know what that language is. I don't dare say it. Malagasy? Malagasy? Is that the native language of Madagascar? Okay, let's get back to the lesson here. Announcements. This is also something that is important in school. And students will get announcements in homeroom. And if you look at the picture, those are bullhorns in that picture. Or they might be speakers. So announcements come over the speakers. And that can be difficult in English because someone who is speaking can be called a speaker. But also, you might have speakers that play music. You might have speakers like in the picture where announcements will happen. So look at the very long definition at the bottom of the page. Announcements also happen in homeroom. Students will learn about the important things happening at school that day. The lunch menu is read. So maybe we have like pitcher day coming up. Pitcher day happens in the United States at the beginning of the year. Students will get their pitcher taken at school. And at the end of the year, their pitchers will go into something we call a yearbook. Students can buy a yearbook and what a yearbook has in it is pictures of all of the students, maybe pictures of some of the sporting events that happen, some of the sports teams, some of the big events that happen throughout the school year, yearbook. I still have all of my high school yearbooks. And right, the next one is recess probably students almost all students i think like recess and recess is a break from school my students who are 13 and 14 still have recess but a lot of times in the united states only younger students will have recess Recess is when students get a break from school. It might last 15 or 20 minutes, but it's a good chance for them to go outside and play. Their school might have something like this. We might call that a playground. It looks like it has a slide. It looks like it has some things you might climb on. That is recess at school. And like I said, my students still have recess. Sometimes they will go outside and play basketball. Sometimes they will just talk to each other. Sometimes they will chase each other around the schoolyard. All right, let's look at another question. We have another question. There are six. Natalia from Chile. Hope everything is going well for Natalia in Chile. Hey, Brent. Can you mention the uncommon school subjects that high school students take? For example, language arts, calculus, social studies. Which ones are obligated to pass the year grade? Thank you. All right. Obligated. That is a good term to use. That could almost be an entire lesson. How do you graduate high school? in the United States. And my students right now are doing that. In fact, on Monday, crazy, on Monday, 
I teach at a middle school. We will talk about that at the end of the lesson. I teach at a middle school. My students are 13 and 14 years old. Next year, they will go to the high school. That is the last school before college. But they need to pick their courses or they need to pick their classes. So people on Monday from the high school will come down and help them pick their courses. So you need English all four years of high school. By the time you graduate high school, you need four English courses. English 9, English 10, English 11, and English 12. Because high school has the ninth grade, the 10th grade, the 11th grade, and the 12th grade. So one interesting course that I heard about at my high school is called Tiny House Building. Tiny House. My cord is all messed up down here. It's live. Uh, a tiny house. That is something in the United States. It's exactly what it sounds like. It's a very small home. Well, at the high school, they have a course called Tiny House Building, where students will actually build a house. So there's a lot of carpentry involved in that course. Carpentry. A carpenter makes things out of wood. Hope that helps. Good question. Let's try to answer one more from the form here. Natalia, thank you for your question. And Ruslan from Kazakhstan. Almaty, right? Is that the capital of Kazakhstan? Uh, what motivates me to teach? Oh, what kind of book do you suggest to read? Thanks in advance. Um, I think I said it at the beginning of the lesson, um, motivates. So if you know, like what makes you want to do something motivates, what gets you out of bed in the morning? That is something that motivates you. So the motivation, that's the noun, the motivation I have to teach is hopefully people will watch these lessons and become better English students. They will become better English speakers. They will become better English listeners. Yeah, so that really motivates me to keep making these lessons. And uh, this is one of my favorite hours of the week where I get to speak with all of you. All right, make that this. And let's talk about the next one, spring break. So if you know your four seasons in English, winter, spring, summer, fall, spring happens in March, April, May, at least where I live. If you live in South America or Australia, or Southern Africa, it's a little different, right? But for us in the Northern Hemisphere, Spring happens in March, April, or May. And spring break is when students have a week off from school. And what are some things they might do on spring break? Spring break is when students get a week-long vacation from school. This break happens in March or April. So my spring break will be coming up in April. My son attends school in a different state. He is on spring break right now. Because it's cold where I live, families who can afford to fly somewhere warmer will do so. So my family, uh, we usually stay here because it is expensive to fly to Florida or Mexico. But a lot of families will do that because it's cold where I live in Maine. Let's see. I thought I had, maybe it didn't save. Oh man. I had something out. Oh, it's for three day weekend. We'll get to it later. Okay. I thought it was for spring break. Sorry. Let's talk about winter break. 
Winter break occurs at the end of December. Now, when I was growing up, this was called Christmas break because where I lived, almost everybody celebrated Christmas. But now, where I live, not everybody does celebrate Christmas. So it is now called winter break, just so everybody feels included. Winter break. And that happens at the end of December. It does happen during Christmas. And it will also happen for New Year's Eve. So usually winter break is about two weeks off from school. I love winter break. Let me check the chat to see if everything is well. Hey, Danny, hope you're doing well. Tanya, she is from Germany. She says, I would love to build a tiny house. Alonzo, he's on Facebook. He shares a lot of my stuff. Alonzo, thank you so much. I get notifications when people share my lessons. Alonzo, he's one of the best. Hope you're doing well. Helena, hi, sir. How are you? I'm from Brazil. I want to learn how to speak English. Well, you, my friend, are in the white, right place. That is what we are doing here. One of the best ways to become a better English speaker to become a better English listener. And I am going to be here for about an hour, hopefully speaking slowly and clearly so your ear can hear that English. Utari, I love spring break. You know what? I love spring break too. I love winter break. I love summer vacation. It's good stuff. Mozambique is in the house. Welcome. Welcome. Natalia has a ton of questions. Well, guess what? Why don't we do something I'd like to call members chat? Oh my goodness. I'm not ready for this. I need to set up, um, set something up really quickly. Talk amongst yourselves. Um, a lot of times when I am in my classroom and I'm trying to get something ready, it doesn't happen very often, but when I don't have something ready and my students are just waiting around, I will say, talk amongst yourselves. And that means just, you know, have a conversation with each other while I fix something. All right, let me do this. We are going to turn on members only chat and I will be able to answer any questions members have. All right, just as a thank you. So you don't have to use the form if you are a member for about what, five minutes? Let's do that, about five minutes. Hey Siri, please set my timer for five minutes. She's doing it, but hang on. Kuhn is from Cambodia. This week, my students learned about Cambodia. They learned it was a beautiful country, but they also learned it has a terrible history in the 1970s. Wasn't very fun, but what a beautiful country. I would love to visit one day, hopefully soon. A little Cambodia trip head over to Thailand, visit Angkor Wat, Sim Reap. Be very fun. All right, Natalia, she's a channel member. Thank you. If you would like to become a channel member, there is a link in the chat. It will get you some bonus lessons. All right. I love spring break, Natalia from Chile says. But the most memorable event were school field trips. Do we do those at my school? How many a year? Yeah, so a school field trip is when the class will leave school, probably get on a bus, and go somewhere. Somewhere hopefully fun. My daughter is actually on a field trip right now. She stayed overnight last night. 
My wife is with her. My wife is a chaperone. I think that's a French term. But a chaperone is when an adult goes somewhere with a child most of the time. So you might chaperone a school dance. That is when adults are watching children to make sure they behave. So my wife is chaperoning my daughter's field trip right now. Well, because of COVID, we have not gone on too many field trips in the past few years. But last month, I think for the first time since COVID, my class went bowling for a field trip. So we spent almost the entire day at the bowling alley. And I did make a short lesson yesterday about bowling terms, bowling shoes, bowling pins, the gutter, the alley. All right. Yes, and Natalia, before a student can leave school during the day for a field trip, their parents must sign a permission slip. A permission slip lets the school know that the parents know the student will be leaving school. Great one. Oh, Thailand's in the house. Nice. Natalia, we will get to the report card very soon. You weren't kidding when you said a lot of questions, right? Well, that's what members chats are all about. All right, Pony says, my kid will start school this year. This is a great lesson for me. Thank you. Yeah, so at the end of the lesson, we will talk about pre-K and elementary school. So I'm not sure how old your son or daughter is, but if they are four years old and your city offers it, they might go to pre-K. If not, they will start in kindergarten. That's what we call it. We'll get to that a little later. Yeah, I think Cecilia, we were talking about Thailand and Cambodia this week. Thailand seems like an amazing place. The land of smiles, I think we call it in English. But Cecilia says, I would love to visit Angkor Wat in Cambodia. It's absolutely amazing. Yeah, looks beautiful. I honestly, oh, I think I had to get rid of it. Uh, this morning, I was looking at the price of flights to Cambodia. It was cheaper to fly into Phnom Penh than Sem Reap, but sometimes I dream. Sometimes I dream. Yes, uh, Natalia says, a chaperone is like a supervisor, a monitor. Yes, exactly. Audie the Thai, dear teacher Brent. All right, I would, uh, so um, Audie is a gold member. So he said that he is going to send me a message to ask some questions after. And I do uh, member, member questions on videos. So yeah, that would be great. Send it to me on Volley, send it to me on Discord. Brent, what expressions can we, oh, it's only five minutes. So I will stop members chat now, but there are quite a few questions to get to. So everybody can chat, but let me answer some of those last questions, okay? Uh, subscribe, anyone, hey, anyone, for the rest of the stream, anyone, can get in the chat, even the trolls. How about that? That's fun. Uh, Harry, Brent, what expressions can we use to say someone can't continue their study in the next grade? Maybe because their scores are really bad. Yeah, the most common thing we would say, Harry, from Indonesia, is they are staying back. Yeah. So if my students fail all of their classes, they might stay back. They might be held back. Yeah. Hope that helps. Stay back is definitely the most common. Mega. Hope you're doing well. Freddie Wolf. Hey, let me take a drink of water. My throat is getting a little parched. That's a very fancy way to say you are thirsty. It's getting a little dry. 
If this lesson is helping your English improve, don't forget to tap that like button and share it with a friend who's learning English. Yeah, please don't forget. Tap that like button. Share this with a friend who might be learning English. Brent, what do you think about chat GBT? Uh, it's easy manner for students to cheat on their exams. Yeah. Do you allow students to use it during lessons? No. Chat GPT, GPT, um, I think I get those letters wrong sometimes, is something in English we call AI, artificial intelligence. It's almost like a computer that can think. And yes, you can tell chat GPT to type an essay for you. And it will write out an essay. You need to give it a few talking points, we might call it, and it can write your essay for you. I've used chat GBT a couple times to fill out descriptions for the YouTube videos. It's a little clunky right now. It's not perfect. A lot of times you can tell that a computer wrote it now what about in two or three years i think it's going to be very tough to tell the difference between artificial intelligence writing the essay and students but i've also heard people are developing apps to detect essays written by chat gpt so i don't know it's something that I worry about. Yeah. I think one day, who knows, maybe an entire movie will be made using artificial intelligence. Has anyone seen the movie The Terminator with Arnold Schwarzenegger? Come on. Is that predicting the future? Is that what it's going to look like when the machines start taking over? Uh, fun question. Scary question, maybe. I don't know. All right. Just looking for oh, Natalia. She's making some trouble. No. No. You are not a bad apple, Natalia. Come on. Come on. Yeah, Harry, I would say, yeah. My child has to stay back. They have to repeat a grade. We might also say, uh, you're very welcome. Uh, yeah, chat GPT is like Siri. Um, but yeah, is I think Siri's kind of dumb. Sorry, Siri. Hey, Siri, did I hurt your feelings? Oh, she's happy to be here. That's good. But I think, um, Siri is kind of dumb compared to chat GPT. So if I said chat GPT is kind of dumb. They might know it, and then they might get mad at me. Oh, one of my favorite countries to say in the English language, Djibouti. Djibouti. Chat GBT, right? That's what it is? Cheat GBT. Okay. It's a good one. Hasta la vista, baby. It's exactly what we're talking about, right? Nice. Mike, hope you're doing well. All right, let's get back to it. Hang on, Cecilia. Yesterday I asked chat GPT to help me create a virtual book club. Its answer was amazing. All right. Um, in English, a book club is when people will read the same book and then get together and meet to talk about it. Yeah, I used to be in a book club. Now... I'm just a little too busy. I haven't read a book in a long time. Did somebody ask a question about a book I would recommend? I think I forgot to answer that. In the description, there is a link to a couple books that I do like. They are affiliate links. So if you buy a book there, I might make a couple cents. But um, they're Stephen King books. My favorite author. Stephen King. One is The Long Walk. I know 
Arone. He read The Long Walk. I think he liked it. Uh, yeah, sure. Tanya is wondering, what is an essay? It's a piece of formal writing. So often you have to research for an essay. Um, each year, my students will write three to four essays. They are about one or two pages each. All right. Hope that hope that helps. Essay. Yeah. We need to get back to the uh, lesson, don't we? I hope this is helpful for you. Oh, boy. Standardized tests. Let's talk about standardized tests in English. Each year, students need to take standardized tests. They need to fill in the bubbles with a number two pencil. Yeah, so if you look at that picture, that is what many standardized tests look like. That pencil, the part you write with in a pencil, in English we call lead, and number two pencils have number two lead, whatever that means. It's not too hard, it's not too soft. And students will have to fill in those little bubbles. And some standardized tests are really important. Some standardized tests help students get into college if they do really well. The SAT is one of those tests. Excuse me. So each year, my students will take a standardized test. If something is standardized, that means research has been done to make sure the scores are accurate. Yeah, they usually are sort of, um, but it just measures how well a student is doing. Some teachers hate standardized tests. I hate standardized tests, but it gives us an idea of how a student is doing. And the SATs is something that colleges will look at if a student does really well on the SATs, they could get into a really good school. Hopefully that helps. Not one of my favorite subjects to talk about, standardized tests. What about this, lockers? Lockers. Students will keep their backpacks in that picture, that black thing hanging from the locker door is a backpack. Students will keep their backpacks and the books they aren't using in their lockers during the school day. And yes, my students have lockers. Some of them use them. Some of them don't. Some of them don't like the combination lock that's on the locker. If you see that black round thing, we call that a combination lock. You need to turn the lock around and find the right numbers to open your locker. Yeah, a lot of my students don't like that. So they might carry around all of their books for the day in their backpack and never visit their locker. I don't know. It's up to them. I don't really care. Some teachers get mad if a backpack is in the room. I don't care. Doesn't really bother me. What about this? Assignments. Assignments. So probably in each class, almost every day, the teacher will ask the student to complete work. And that work we call assignments. Look at the bottom. You can practice shadowing if you would like. We call the work that students need to complete in and out of class Assignments. You know, we have special names for work that is done in class, work that is done out of class. Classwork is assignments completed in class. Can you guess what we call the work at home? The work done at home is called homework. Homework 
as assignments completed at home. So as a teacher, I never assign homework. I only assign classwork. And if students don't complete the assignments in class, then it becomes homework. Hope that helps. Hope that helps. All right. Yeah, Jorge, I need to, there's so many, so many things to do in this hour. I need to get to the form again. Algeria is in the house. All right. Let's get back to the form. Let's do the form. Hopefully I can answer all the questions in the form. There are only four more. Let's do them all right now. All right. Let me share that with you. Boom. It is on the screen. Hey, Jorge. Look at that. Jorge is from Ecuador. How are you doing? All right. What is the most natural expression that you as a teacher say when you give a makeup test? Is it something like I'm giving a makeup test today or how would you say it? Yeah, I would say something like that. Now, all of my tests are available on Google Classroom. So my students will take their tests on a Google form. And it's really easy in my class. If they get a grade they don't like, I think we're talking about grades next. If they get a grade they don't like, they can take a makeup test. And basically what I do is I delete the old test and they can start fresh. They can get a fresh start. They can start over from question one. Yeah, and that can be their makeup test. Um, sometimes if students miss school because they are sick or maybe they went on a family trip, they will have to do makeup assignments. Yeah, that's another term we use. A makeup assignment is when the student isn't in class, they have to make it up. That means they have to do it late they might pass it in late. Some teachers will take off points for their grades if assignments are late. I do not. Some teachers do. So let's talk about grades in the United States. Now, each school will do this a little differently. So I will talk about my school. At my school, students get a percentage for their grade. If everything is perfect, they will get a hundred. And the best grade you can get is a hundred. And that is an A. If students fail, they will get an F. And at my school, failing is if you get 70% or lower. So 70% of the assignment correct or lower is failing. It's an F. So we have A, B, C, D, and F. No grade E. A is the best. F is the worst. B, C, D, they're in the middle. A grade of C is average. And it's usually right in the middle. Average. Not a good grade. Not a horrible grade. A C, it's just average. It's just in the middle. If you have a lot of C's in high school, you probably won't get into college. Hope that helps. Now let's look at the form again, just so we don't miss any questions. The next one is from Freddie. I know that guy. He's from France. Oh, hey, we are going to talk about this. At what age do children start their first year of school in the United States? What's it called at that age? You said kindergarten is from age five to six. Yes, I did. Let's, let's, let's table that. If you table something, it's usually used in business. If you table something, that means we will get to it later. Let's table that. Hold that thought. We will talk about that towards the end of the lesson. Good question, Freddie. All right, the next one in the form, we have two more. Boris from Russia. I know a Boris from Russia. 
He's a big sports fan. If this is the same guy, uh, hey, I, I promise I did not even read that question. He's always talking to me about uh, Alabama softball, Alabama football. He knows which sports teams I like. All right, so this is about sports. Hello, Brent. My question is about sports. Roll Tide, by the way. People who are Alabama fans, we say roll tide to each other. Look, we have the St. Louis Cardinals, the Arizona Cardinals, the Louisville Cardinals, for example, and then we have the Stanford Cardinal, singular. Why? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. You can do a whole lot of research on college sports teams, and most of the teams their mascot will end with an S like the bear cats, the wild cats, but Stanford and their mascot is a tree. So I don't know, but it is singular. It's just the Stanford Cardinal, the Notre Dame fighting Irish, Alabama crimson tide. There are very few that do not end with an S. To be honest, I don't know why. But the Stanford Cardinal is their mascot. Stanford is a college or a university in California. Very good university. A lot of computer scientists come out of Stanford. Yeah. Sorry, Boris. I'm not exactly sure why. Good question, though. All right. We got one more here. I know this guy, Harry 300. He's from Indonesia. He's, oh no, I'm sorry. He's from the earth's atmosphere somewhere in the clouds. Maybe he's in the air. Uh, is there a canteen at your school, Brent? Yeah, we don't use that term canteen. It's an older term, but we would use cafeteria. How do you call a person uh, selling at the canteen, a clerk? Um, quite a few questions here. Um, we have lunch ladies in our cafeteria. There are no guys that work there. I've never heard of a lunch guy, but the people who work in the cafeteria are called lunch ladies. That's it. Lunch ladies. Yeah. You pay the lunch lady when you buy a lunch at the school cafeteria. All right. What's the uh, next one? Harry 300 has... That's more than three questions. Though. I was going to say three questions. Um, how do you call a school before kindergarten? It's preschool, pre-K. Oh, right, hang on, hang on. <clears throat> we have pre-K and we have preschool. They're a little different. Hmm. Maybe I should skip to that now. So I didn't, I wasn't thinking of that. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Jeez. Okay, let's do this right now then. Pre-K, pre-K. Let's talk about pre-K right now. All right. Students who attend pre-K are four years old. Students who attend kindergarten are probably five or six years old. That's what the K stands for, kindergarten. It used to be the first school or the first grade students would attend kindergarten and a lot of times kindergarten is only a half day long they might go in the morning and then get dismissed or they might go in the afternoon but because the students are so young and they don't exactly know how school works it can be a long day for them kindergarten is usually a half a day but about 20 years ago, the United States government or local state governments started doing something called pre-K where four-year-olds could attend. And it's a public school. Taxpayers pay for that school. Now, you might hear the term that Harry said, and that is preschool. When I hear preschool, that makes me think the parents are paying for it. So those students are probably four years old, maybe three years old. But preschool 
and pre-K are a little different. Pre-Ks are paid by taxpayers. The government uses taxpayer money to pay the teachers, to pay for the school. Preschool, parents pay for that. And my both of my students, sorry, both of my children went to preschool. Yeah, because let me take a drink. This can get a little confusing. And we are at an hour already. This can get a little confusing. When my kids were younger, to get into pre-K, you actually had to win a lottery. So the parents that wanted their child to attend pre-K had to sign up, give their name. Maybe 20 parents signed up but there are only 10 slots. There were only 10 students who could attend that classroom. So my daughter did not get into pre-K. We had to pay for an extra year of preschool for her, but my son got into pre-K. It's a very long answer, right? I hope that helps. And then Harry also mentioned vocational schools. Vocational schools are schools where you can learn to be a carpenter. You can learn to be an electrician. You can learn to be a chef. You can learn to be a plumber. These are often schools that train people to work with their hands. It's a vocational school. You can make a lot of money if you go to a vocational school. The high school at my school has a vocational school. So students who are 17 or 18, if they are lucky, they sign up, they might be able to get into a vocational school. All right. It looks like Haiti is in the house. It looks like I might have missed, might have missed a super chat. So Sita, I don't want to miss your super chat here. Sita, Thank you so much. It says, thanks for your great job. Although I'm very late watching your videos, your lessons are helping me tremendously. That's a great adverb there. Tremendously. Sounds good. Sita, thank you so much. Sita has been a channel member for a long time. This is not the first time she has dropped a super chat. Thank you so much, Sita. Very generous. I'm coming to Brazil at some point in the next year or two, hopefully 2024. Jamie and I need to take Sita out to dinner. She's been very generous. Thank you, Sita. Thank you so much for the super chat. Yeah, very generous, Sita. Thank you so much. I hope you are getting a lot out of the English lessons here. All right, so I am going to skip around here for time. We're going at about an hour. But I do want to talk about something called elementary school. Elementary school. So these are grades from kindergarten to sixth grade. Sixth grade. Not easy to say. Middle school is seventh to eighth grade. These students are about 13 or 14 years old. We also have high school. That is the last school before college. Students here are in the ninth grade, 10th grade, 11th grade, and 12th grade. Not easy to say, right? 12th grade, high school. The last school before college. Teenagers go to high school. All right. That is going to just about do it. Yeah. I do have a few more slides. Modags is here. How are you? How much do parents have to pay for pre-K? Um, for pre-K, it is, it is free because taxpayer dollars go to it. Preschool is expensive. I don't even 
dare say, but maybe four or five hundred dollars a month for preschool. It's really, really expensive. Modags, he's here. Welcome. Hope you're doing well, my friend. Audi the tie. Audi the tie. Also a gold member. Very generous. He said he is going to be leaving some questions for me. Got a little something for you here. Thank you so much for the super chat. Oh, thank you so much for the super chat. And each time that plays, I take a sip of water. You know, you know what? I actually don't have water in here today. I have a new drink called Prime. I bought it at the store yesterday. It's pretty good. It's supposed to quench your thirst. Quench your thirst. If you are thirsty and you drink water and you're not thirsty anymore, we say, oh, that quenched my thirst. Prime does a pretty good job at quenching your thirst. Tastes good. Is it better than water? Eh, probably not. Probably about the same, just a little more expensive. Uh-oh, I don't have my glasses. I am from, I can't see that. That looks like Bangladesh to me. If that's a green flag with a red circle, I think that's Bangladesh. All right, I must go now. This is fun. Drink first, please. I look tired. I'm I am tired for some reason. I am tired, but I didn't I didn't go to school yesterday. I had a whole story. I could tell that story now. Let's see here. Let me bring this up. Some of these we will save for another another day, but let's talk about a 3-day weekend. How about that? Because I actually had a three-day weekend. I didn't go to school yesterday. And I'll tell you why. So my son, and yesterday where I live was Friday. Let's see. Let's talk about what a three-day weekend is first, okay? A three-day weekend is when you have either Friday or Monday off from school or work. So yesterday, I took Friday off. My son had a doctor's appointment in the morning. So I had a three-day weekend because I took off Friday. I needed to take him to the doctor's. He can't drive yet. I took him. My son had a doctor's appointment. Now, the appointment was in the morning. So his appointment was in the morning, so we just made a day out of it. That's a term we sometimes use. If you have something to do in the morning, you're not going to work. You could just take the whole day. So we made a day out of it. We went out for lunch. We went bowling. And we went to see a movie. That movie we went to see was called Cocaine Bear. And it was uh, kind of a horror movie, but it was also a comedy. It was kind of funny. And it was based on a true story about a bear who was walking through the woods, like most bears do, just walking through the woods. And they found some cocaine. Cocaine is a drug, kind of a scary drug. And I'm told it gives you a lot of energy. I think it can kill you too, because you can have a heart attack. So I would not do cocaine, but this bear did it. And ate like 70 pounds of cocaine and then ended up dying because of a heart attack. So be careful. If you ever do cocaine, it could kill you. It killed this bear. But what the movie did was it made like it into a comedy and this bear was climbing trees really quickly. It was killing people. There is a lot of blood and gore in this horror movie, but I enjoyed the movie, Cocaine Bear. Yeah. I would recommend if you like funny, kind of weird movies, Cocaine Bear. <laughs> Check it out. Yeah, Jorge, I totally agree. Jorge says you need several lessons to cover this school topic. 
Yeah, that's why I don't mind. There are some slides that I didn't use today. Some pictures. We will use them in a future lesson. There is just so much material to cover when you're talking about English terms we use for school. So, oh man, I'm sorry. That looks like Turkish, but I don't know Turkish. And I think I need to go. Cocaine bear. Yeah, be careful. Be careful. Oh, no way. Favorite comedian? I need to look him up because there was one guy who looked familiar. I wonder if it's Scott Sice. Scott Sice. Hang on. We're still live. Let's check it out. Scott Sice. Um, but I, I noticed him like on, I think it was like TikTok or something. That's the guy. Yes. He, he's on TikTok too, I think. Let me see if I can share this picture. He was so good in that movie. He played a, a paramedic. A paramedic is someone who rides in an ambulance, kind of like a doctor. Okay, I know who you're talking about. And he does TikToks, doesn't he? He talks about where um, people, like, if they go to a job and they talk to customers, I know that guy. He's very funny. Very funny. Yeah, thanks, Mode. Like, I know that guy from somewhere. Yeah. All right. You know what? Oh, it was Turkish. Nice. I need to go. So I hope you all enjoyed learning some English. We were over an hour today. Thank you. Okay, that's his name. Snarkiness. Yeah, if somebody's snarky, they have some really good comebacks. They're a little bit mean, but a little bit funny. All right. Thank you so much. Audie, I want to thank you again for that super chat. Sita, thank you so much for the super chat. Even before we started, Amina, if you are watching this on replay, thank you so much for the super chat. Thank you to everyone who is a channel member. Thank you to everyone who is a subscriber, who liked the video, who left a comment. Thank you so much. I'm going to go get ready for next week's lesson. Maybe it will be about school. Maybe it will be about U.S. holidays. I think it might be U.S. holidays. So thank you so much. Adios, amigos. I will see you next week. And then Wednesday, I think there will be another lesson from New York City. Adios.